I find it so very typical of me and of this channel that this video was actually supposed to be my first video of the fall. And during the filming of it, we got our first snow on November the 11th, which is only odd because the days leading up to the snow um, were so warm you didn't need jackets. I was hoping that this would be a fall video a Halloween themed video actually that I would finish two weeks prior before this snow fell but that didn't happen so I think maybe we should just focus on the fact that life is hard but in this video I use a Vogue easy option sewing pattern and I do view D and let's talk about it even though I'm using this gorgeous skull and flower and spider web fabric because it was supposed to be my Halloween make. Things didn't work out that way. So let's get into the sewing. So this pattern is Vogue V9328. And like I said before, it's a very easy option. It also has the custom fit for the cup sizes. I started with the skirt um, because I knew the bodice would need to be mocked up and the skirt wouldn't. The skirt pieces are 10, 11, 12, and 13. And did I mention that it has pockets, which is piece number 14. As I was laying out my skirt pieces, I realized that my fabric was directional, which I had noticed before, and I'm glad that I did. So um, I laid it out into a way where my skulls will be facing up front and none of them will be upside down, which led to being almost short of fabric but in the end it ended up being enough so i started with getting all of those skirt pieces cut out i was very optimistic when starting this project it being a vogue easy option i thought it would be something i could get done quickly and actually meet a deadline if you've been following my channel you know that i recently started working outside of my home and that has led to a lot of travel here recently and I am still struggling to find the balance between working and still being full-time available for my family and then finding time for my own hobbies. And so we are not there yet where I have figured out the balance of how that works. And so I'll be happy to get a project a month done, at least in the meantime, as we try and figure out what's our new normal in my family and what um, my own time management looks like. If you have any tips or insights to that, please feel free to share um, in the comment box below. Like, how do you go back to work after being a stay at home mom for so long and still feel as if you're meeting everyone's needs, including your own? It's very, very new for me and for my family, but we're working on it. Piece number 12 is the skirt back. We have two of these that we are going to seam together at center back. And then the side back is where we'll have to work with the pocket. And because I'm running so low on fabric, we're gonna cut the pocket pieces out of this pink, which is like as close to this is I had in my stash, but we're this is all that's left of the fabric because it was directional and I didn't pay attention to that until I started cutting the skirt. So that's where we're at. So here we are finally at the sewing machine. I am now stitching all of the skirt panels together. I know I say this a lot, but I'm always slightly annoyed with just how little time is actually spent at the sewing machine when it comes to sewing. There's so much prep work that goes into an, a garment before you get to sit at the sewing machine, but I definitely enjoy just being able to stitch those long skirt panels together and not really have to think about it a lot listen to some television and that sort of thing. I will say this sewing pattern definitely lives up to its name of being a very easy option when it comes to sewing patterns. There's not a lot to the skirt at all until it's time to insert the pockets 
which is what I am doing now, which for some reason I always seem to have trouble with. I am not sure why me and pockets struggle a lot, but getting them to lay properly and fold in the way they're supposed to seems to be a thing for me, but I will say I do believe this is only my second time ever doing something with pockets. I did a skirt before with pockets and now this dress, um, but I don't think I even shared that video when I did the skirt that had pockets, but I wore the skirt when I went on my trip with Stephanie Canada and Haley from Haley Marie Vintage. So I don't think I've done a lot of pockets, but there's something that I struggle with. But here they are, well, almost pinned in place, and then I will get them stitched down. So as I said before, this is a Vogue Easy Options is what they call these patterns and they are designed for a beginner sewing project and they have the custom fit cup sizes. So that way you don't need to do a full bust adjustment or a small bust adjustment, which I definitely appreciate because you know I have struggled with getting things to fit correctly in my bust. I wanna know if you've done any of the other very easy options or if you've sewn up any patterns with the custom cup sizes that you would like to recommend for a beginner sewing project or a pattern that you enjoyed or one that you think I should stay away from. Any insight to any of the other very easy options or the custom fit cup size sewing patterns, then please feel free to share that with us in the comment box below. I would love to hear you guys' experience with any of these sorts of things. So at this point, the skirt is looking good. It needs to be hemmed and of course it doesn't have the zipper yet in the back. And I am currently mocking up the bodice. So this is proof that I did indeed do a mock up. I am cutting it out of some scrap fabric that I got from a fabric mart sale for like a dollar yard. So it's actually cheaper than muslin. And we have pieces three, five, six, and seven for the bodice. So this is the mock-up of the bodice. It's hard to tell how it really fits because I didn't put the zipper in the back. Like I don't feel like doing all of that. And then like this feels too big here, but I don't know if when the sleeves attached, if that is gonna do something different. I don't know if my dart should be here, if it should be more in my bust. I don't know anything. So I guess for me, the point of the mock-up is like, just to make sure that it's not too little, which is not too little, but I don't know. Like, I don't know where these darts are supposed to be. Did I cut the cup too big? Like maybe I should have did a C cup instead of, I mean a B cup instead of the C cup. I don't know. But I know that at least it's not too small. And I feel like this sits in my natural waist. So I don't think I need to raise the, the waistline up or anything. It's not too little. We're just gonna call that a win and cut it out of the fashion fabric. So I moved into cutting the bodice out of the fashion fabric, which there wasn't a whole lot left. So I had to be really smart with how I cut this out. And as you see in the previous clip, I still haven't figured out a lot of things about fit and how that works. And so at this point, I'm just happy whenever things aren't too small and hopefully we'll learn more as we go. So this, these are piece number six. And I had to stay stitch the edge. So they're the back piece. And now I need to attach piece number seven, which is, can you see that the sun's coming? The bodice side back. So stay stitch piece number six, and now we're going to attach piece number seven to the sides of here. So getting these pieces attached correctly was a little bit tricky as it is essentially a princess seam. And so it had to be fitted correctly and clipped a little bit as I went to make sure that it fit, um, the pieces fit together the way they were supposed to. But I do enjoy a side princess seam. At times I find them a little confusing, but I'm getting better about them.
so these are the two back pieces and this is how it'll fit together um, with that cute little opening at the back that I don't know if I paid much attention to to begin with so I'm matching up the notches at the top and the bottom will stay open that's gonna be for the zipper So returning from stitching out of the sewing machine, I started working with piece number three, which is the bodice front, and I cut this in a C cup. I don't know if I should have done a B, but possibly. <laughs> um, I'll let you guys be the judge at the end when I show you the final photos, but I am transferring that side dart here now um, along with the rest of the markings that go on piece number three and then we will get that to the sewing machine as well. So now I'm working with piece number three, which is the bodice front. Um, if you cut an A cup, yours is gonna be piece number one. If you cut a B cup, yours is gonna be piece number two. And for a D cup, it will be numbered four. Here I am getting that dart stitched in here. So before we were working with the back, which was a similar cut to the front, which I do find to be a flattering cut on this dress, but it wasn't the true princess seams like we're getting ready to work with when we attach piece number five. So piece number five is the side front that is attached to the front. So here it is, and this is where that true princess seam comes in. And you have to do some clipping and maneuvering to make it fit as it should, but it is a very flattering fit, I think. I do think this is a very flattering dress, a easy to follow dress. I would love to make this again in some fabric that's not so novelty that I could wear um, anytime. It's very cottage core s with the flowy sleeves and the long, it's just a really, really flattering cut of a dress and I really do like it. So once you get that princess seam pinned in place, we're going to take it to the sewing machine and then coming back, you should have something that looks like this. So these are, this is the back, which I am now attaching the front to. And so the front will be seamed up and it will be seamed at the shoulders. The back will be left open and that is for the zipper. And so once we get this stitched, there's not a whole lot left to this. There is a technique of the way you finish the edges that I don't think I liked that much. I would have probably much rather had just faced this dress, but that is not what the instructions have you do. I don't know if that is because they want it to be an easier make, being one of being the fact that it's a Vogue easy option, but I definitely probably would have rather had just faced the dress, like where you make a carbon copy and then stitch them together and flip them inside out. I probably would have much rather done that. But now we are moving on to working with the sleeves. As I said before, so much time elapsed between the start and the completion of this dress. So here I am like figuring out what is what because it's been a long time since I had worked with this dress. So I'm back looking at instructions and trying to figure out what the heck is going on. But I knew that the bodice was mostly complete. It would need to be stitched up the front and finished of course, but mainly it was the sleeves that it was time to work with the sleeves and the sleeve cuffs and then the bias tape, which is what I have in my hand that is gonna be used to finish the edge of the dress. I have never really liked working with bias tape and it could be because I don't really know how to work with bias tape. I think maybe I should invest more time into figuring this out. But yeah, I did not particularly care for the method of finishing this dress, as I said, but bias tape is what it requires and so that's what I used. So the instructions say, open out one folded edge of single fold bias tape. Press out crease and pre-shape tape to match curve of neck edge by pressing lightly. Then you're gonna trim the bodice seam allowance even with the bias tape. Turn bias tape to inside along seam, press, baste in place. On outside, stitch close to basted edge. So, I don't know if I did this correctly or not. 
in the end, it came out well, I believe. But I think I'm reading these instructions more now as I'm reading them to you than I really did at the time. I lined up the bias edge when I really wasn't supposed to. I was supposed to line it up with the seam allowance because they say trim by the seam allowance even with the bias tape and I had nothing to trim and yeah so I don't know any tips for working with bias tape or using it to finish things then feel free to share because I really don't think that I did this correctly so yeah and so I got it stitched down and did whatever it is that I did to finish it this next clip will prove that I could not have read the instructions and I certainly couldn't have read them thoroughly because you were supposed to finish the back opening in the same way and I did not I like narrow hemmed it and <laughs> and that's what we have there that's what that is it's a narrow hem around that opening which it didn't look terrible um it seems like when I'm using these novelty fabrics I don't put as much effort into it because I basically consider it a wearable mock-up. When else am I going to wear this except next Halloween as we bake our Halloween treats and that sort of thing. But it's a good way to see what to expect out of the pattern for me because I'm always leery of wasting expensive fabric. So I just pin the sleeves in place. And we're taking those to the sewing machine, which the sleeves were pretty much self-explanatory. You had to ease stitch the cap between the small circles and then stitch the side seam, which I did. Um, and then, of course, we're going to gather and fit and all those things. It was the cuff that... Um, gave me the most difficulty and I had sewn one other blouse with a cuff before and I probably should have went back and watched that video I'll link it in case you want to but here's why so there's a bit of a discrepancy on the instructions it says to press under five eighths of an inch on the long unnotched edge of cuff clipping as necessary trim pressed under edge to three eighths of an inch but the illustration shows it as the notched edged being the one that is stitched I mean folded and then trimmed so I guess I'm gonna I guess I'm gonna and I stitched this to make sure I was marking it correctly so I guess I'm going to take that out and I just don't know what I should do. So I went with my gut and understood that the directions were wrong. They were saying unnotched edge when they really meant notched edge. And I kind of remembered that from doing a cuff before, but it just made sense. So I gathered it down the end of the sleeve, as you see me doing here. And then I matched up the cuff with the notch. And got that all pinned in place and got it stitched on. And here is what that cuff looks like all completed. I'll have to finish this inside by hand, but looks pretty good. And then that's the sleeve head that will get attached to the bodice. And then I proceeded with hemming the edge of the skirt. So I finally got the buttons sewed on and the buttonholes put in and the buttons sewed on 
the buttonholes were a thing. I don't know what's up with my machine and buttonholes if I just select the wrong setting or what happens, but something drastic always happens with my buttonholes, but they're on nonetheless. And now I'm working on getting the first sleeve put in. And because I'm not feeling well, I think I'm going to get it pinned in and then go lay down and just sew it in by hand because I really can't. Um, I really can't sit up for extended periods of time. So I'm going to go, I'm going to get this pinned in and then I'm going to stitch it in by hand. Then we'll do the other one. And then there is nothing left to do, but to attach the bodice to the skirt that I have already hemmed and figure out how to iron these pockets. It's a gathered skirt, I'm guessing, where it's going to go down. So at some point, these pockets are going to make more sense, I suppose. I don't. I've got the sick brain fog, so I don't know. But I'm going to keep chugging along. Got one sleeve attached. Let's get the other sleeve attached. And then we'll attach the bodice to the skirt. Attach the zipper. And we will be done with our witchy dress that was supposed to be for Halloween. That was three weeks ago. So we got the sleeve all pinned in place. Let's take it to the sewing machine. So if you follow me in my community tab, you will know during the making of this, I caught it the dreaded disease I will not name that I have had three three reasons why I should not have gotten it but I did but luckily no one else in my house did and as I am editing this I am on day 11 of said horrible thing and I am still not feeling the best you can hear the difference in my voice in different parts of this video when I was doing better and then worse and I've yet to regain my strength, but I did complete this dress. I don't know what kind of video this is. I hope you like it. Thank you for being here. Thank you if you stuck around to the end. Um, I got it. I got it done, and that matters. And let's check it out. The day I shot these final photos of the dress, or <laughs> my husband shot some of these, and my son shot some of them so they're a little whatever but I finally felt good this was the first day that I have felt good in a very very long time and so it was only fitting to put on the dress and run around the backyard it's a crisp day but the sun is shining and everybody's on the mend in my house and so that is cause for celebration in my spooky which dress with the pockets that I love that was a very easy dress to sew it was just during a time when life wasn't as easy but better days are coming I can feel it um, I hope you all are well and I will see you in my next video that is very soon and sure to come <laughs>